we're going ahead and welcome everybody out tonight. We thank you once again for tuning in with us. We ask you to be much of prayer for the service tonight. Uh, Brother Daniel, when he stands to uh, uh, bring the message, uh, this is going to be our last night of the revival. Uh, uh, but like we said last night, I don't believe it should end it tonight. I believe that the revival lives on through us and uh, uh, what we've experienced this week. And, uh, you know, a lot of good preaching has been going on on here on Facebook. And, uh, you know, I know it's going to be kept on. And uh, uh, we just ask you tonight, just remember all the prayer requests we made mention of. Uh, and I know there's many out there right now, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting a little bit of better news right now as far as uh, how things are going, uh, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't uh, uh, take that lightly, I, but I, I, all the way through, though, no matter what the news might be saying or anything like that, we know we've always had a God that was in control, had in his hands all the way, and, uh, uh, you know, but I'm but I'm thinking tonight on the revival, looking back at all the services, and I, I've been blessed to be here, and I hope that you have, too. Uh, uh, once again, we just ask that if you, if you can... Uh, uh, maybe share it out with the world today. Uh, you know, it's about as easy as it ever could be uh, right now. And uh, you know what? And we just uh, like to give you every opportunity to do that, uh, to share a portion of God's Word. So uh, we're going to play a few songs tonight. Uh, uh, before that, we'll ask Brother Elsa if he would lead us in a word of prayer, and, uh, and then we'll get into the song service. Amen. Uh, Father in heaven, it's again we come with a thankful heart, Lord, in that, for the blessings of this week and for the blessings of life. Lord, we thank you for every good gift. Lord, the book of James said all good things come down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. Lord, we thank you that you watched over us and cared for us down to this hour. Lord, as we come into your house tonight, Lord, to do a service for you. Lord, we pray right now, God, that you be in the midst of everything that we do. Bless Brother Daniel as he stands to break the bread of life. Hide him behind the cross, Lord, and make preaching easy for him, Lord, that we might take that word and ever use it for upbuilding to your kingdom. Bless those that are listening tonight, Lord, that may tune in, Lord, that don't know you, free pardon and forgiveness of sin, never been saved by grace, Lord, convict their hearts and save our lost, heal our sick, bless the old age of our land and our country, Lord. Today we know that our country is in a mess, but Lord, you're the answer tonight, Lord, we know that, and God, we pray that you just bless us, continue to walk with us and care for us till you're finished with us here and at the end of the journey, may we hear you say, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Lord, we ask that you just watch over us. Bless Brother Justin. Bless this church. Bless all that enters these doors. Bless him, Lord, as he stands each Sunday, Lord, to preach here. Lord, we pray that you give them many souls for the labor. Go with us. Lead God direct us. Bless them wherever they're gathered together in your name tonight, Lord. Those that are preaching your word, whether it be by Facebook or whatever it be, God, we pray that you bless them and strengthen them in Jesus' name. And that he might be. Amen. Number 92, Victory in Jesus. I heard the
What about 200 in Kenya? Where it will never grow old. These are the old hymns now tonight. Well, they've been all week. That's about all I know is old hymns, but this is a beautiful song. Good, good thought. You know, here we grow old and our bodies grow tired and weary. And uh, we just uh, we just seem like we wear out here. But one day after a while, there'll be a place where, where we're going, and it's called heaven. And we'll never grow old, Amen. never grow weary, never grow tired. We'll just praise him forever and forever. You It don't matter to me. I'll do it in you. I'll do it in you. I have heard. Trust in Jesus.
again, we appreciate all the help. Uh, Brother LC's helped us all week on the singing and everything. And uh, I want to say we appreciate him tonight and uh, enjoy the songs. And, uh, you know, I, I always, we was talking right before we started right here. And I know that I've said it quite a lot, but these uh, uh, song books up here, the songs they have in them, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're something that can touch the heart each and every time. They got enough gospel in them. And, uh, you know what, tonight, if there's anything that you could probably get out of any of the services this week, uh, is that you begin to learn to trust in Jesus. And, uh, you know, I, uh, if anything's going to carry us on past this revival, it'll be trusting in Jesus. Yes. And, and no, no matter what's going on, I, you know, I, I, I like to think about Paul a lot of times over in the book of Philippians, fourth chapter. Uh, you know, what they said, he, they learned to be in all things content. And, uh, yes. you know, what does that mean for us? So whenever there's an ever-changing world, yeah, things are going on around us, uh, it shouldn't affect the inward joy. And that joy was given by Jesus uh, uh, when he prayed and asked God that it be put in us that the world couldn't take it away from us. So, uh, you know what, tonight I, I think about that, though, when I stand up here and I begin to tell you that, uh, you know what, if you trust in Jesus, uh, you can't fail it. Uh, you know, I, and I, I don't know anything that's fail-proof in the world Amen. right now. And, uh, I know in my life I've trusted in a lot of things. And uh, you know what, each and every time they've let me down. People have right. let me down. Uh, uh, you know what, things material-wise I have have let me down. But uh, you know what, Jesus has never let me down. Amen. So I'm going to tell you tonight, if I can tell you trust in anything, is a trust in Him. And, uh, so Amen. we appreciate those songs once again. I hope that you've enjoyed them uh, this week, and uh, uh, you know what, we're going to do our best once again to, to uplift the Lord's name tonight, uh, you Amen. know what, not to puff up ourselves or anything like that, just because uh, there's a camera on or anything like that, and that's not what we're here for, we're that's here right. that a revival come, and uh, you know what, and I believe that it ain't going to be anything that we can bring, but we pray for the Spirit of God come down and, uh, and His presence be here tonight, and I believe that it is already, Amen. and I can feel it, I, you know what, I'm glad I can feel that, so uh, if you can't feel it, I I encourage you. It don't matter if you're at home or not. You still should be able to feel the presence of God. It, yes. it lives within you if you're a born-again child of God. Uh, so if you don't feel that, I encourage you to find an altar tonight yes. and call out on Him and uh, make sure everything's right with you and Him. And I, I believe you'll find what you're looking for. So, uh, uh, Brother Elsa, you got a special yeah. you want to do tonight? I'm going to get you and Daniel to help me here too. You know, <laughs> I don't get to do this very often, oh, yeah. but these two brothers, oh, you're God just, on the mountain, that, that. it's what's on my mind. I thought of this song all day. I'm tired in body, Brother Daniel. I ain't going to tell a story. My body wore out. I told Brother Justin, my back's hurting me. It seemed like I'm hurting all over. But I thought of this even on that old rough mower today out in that yard and mowed my, mowed two yards today. And I thought, man, my back's hurting me. But I had this thought on my mind all day. It's easy to praise the Lord mm -hmm. when everything's good in our lives and, and in our land and in our country. But... It ain't so easy sometimes, Brother Justin, when things get down. That's right. Uh, but God's true people, that's what kept coming to my mind. Yes. God's true people know that he's the same God during this crisis that America's in today as he was before this crisis hit. That's right. And matter of fact, probably more people are recognizing him that mm -hmm. today than ever. He's the same God. I can't take a heart that's broken and make it over again. But I know a man who can. Mm -hmm. And the same God that answered my prayer as a 13-year-old boy when I cried, Lord, please save me. That's the same God that's answered my prayer today when I pray over my grandchildren. Brother Justin, I believe those grandbabies are going to be saved. Mm -hmm. People said, well, I, how, you, how can you just keep believing? It ain't happened yet. Well, in due time, Brother Daniel, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. I got to believe that. Yes. I got to believe that this thing that messes our America is in today is going to pass. Right. I, I, I believe that God will, God will see us through it. And what he won't see us through, he'll take us out of and take us on home. Right. So I'm glad that uh, to be a part of this revival. I'll, I've enjoyed every day. I've just enjoyed it tremendously. And it's been a God-given privilege to have a place to go with, with my brothers and to try to worship the Lord in spirit and truth and forget the troubles and the cares of this life because it's full of them. But the same God to answer then will answer today. He's still God on the mountains, still God in our valleys. Maybe you're in a deeper valley than I am tonight, but if you are, remember, God's still there. He's still God. Amen. Life is
that are in communion with you. We pray that you continue to bless them, dear yes, Lord, give them your courage and your wisdom, dear Lord, that only comes from you. We pray for those that are sick and afflicted and hurting, dear Lord. We pray that you would just touch in a mighty way, dear Lord, do a work that only you can do. Dear Lord, we pray that you would be with those, more importantly, that are lost and undone. We ask that you would just touch those hearts, dear Lord. Prick their hearts, dear Lord. Let them feel your drawing power. Let them feel your conviction, dear Lord. And we pray that they would turn to you, dear Lord, for it's everlasting too late. We pray, dear Lord, that you would just be with all those, dear Lord, that are uh, dealing with this virus, dear Lord, in whatever way that it may be, dear Lord, those yes. that are afflicted with it, dear God, and those that are uh, battling against it, dear Lord, each and every day, going out on the front lines and dealing with it, and those that are continuing going to and fro, dear Lord, we pray that you would just bless and that your mercies would be abundant. Pray now, dear Lord, that you'd forgive me where I failed to come short, dear God. Cleanse me again with that precious blood of Jesus, the work that was done on the cross. We thank you and praise you for that, dear Lord, for sending your Son to suffer and die for us. Thank you, Jesus, for being obedient unto the Father, even unto death. Forgive us, dear yes. Lord, we pray, and be with us now. We ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our thought tonight would be surrender. Surrender. A choice and a practice. Mm -hmm. Surrender, a choice and a practice. And we're going to start by looking at what I have labeled and kind of put down here in my notes as our perfect example. Our perfect example, and that being Jesus Christ. Perfect example of a surrender, a choice, and a practice. He's shown us the way. We have no excuse. Ignorance is no defense. Jesus has shown us the way. It's a matter of if we will be receptive to it, if we will accept him as our Lord and Savior or not, but he has certainly shown us the way. God sent his son for us, and his son came to this earth, took on flesh, and lived a perfect life, mm -hmm. set a perfect example for us of surrender, choosing that, Amen. surrendering to that, even unto death, being obedient unto the Father, practicing Amen. it. Amen. while he walked on this earth. So we're going to start over in John chapter 10 is where we're going to start on the thought of choice. And we're going to see, again, the example that Jesus set for us. So if you have your scriptures with you and you want to turn over and uh, follow along, we certainly welcome you to do that and hope that you will so that you can see it with your own eyes and for yourself. But in John chapter 10 at verse 17 is where we're going to start to look. And again, thinking about Jesus, and these are the words of Jesus, thinking about him as our perfect example. And we see here Jesus tells us that he made a choice. He made a choice. At verse 17 he says, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Now here this scripture that we're in, I've kind of went down to the end of sort of this parable that Jesus was given, and he was uh, talking about and uh, explaining to the disciples that he was the good shepherd. And maybe they didn't necessarily fully understand it, uh, but here at the end is where we wanted to focus tonight, where he is telling us that he made a choice. He made a choice. And that the Father loves him for that. Amen. The Father loves him for that. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Something that he had to do. Jesus recognized it as something he had to do. No man taketh it from me. And this is where he makes it clear that it's Amen. a choice. Amen. He, he made the choice to do the work that the Father asked him to do. Amen. Uh, God sent him, and he came. Mm -hmm. But he was obedient unto the Father, even unto death, in making that choice. He said, here, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. He chose. He says, I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Amen. Father sent him, and he came willingly, obediently, humbly, and he made that choice to be obedient. Yes, he did. He made that choice to be obedient for you and I tonight. Amen. You and I have that choice to make tonight. We have a will, a free will. God created us with that free will, uh, free moral agents. We have choices to make. We have choices to make. And are we going to follow the example that Jesus set for us? Are we going to be surrendered? Are we going to surrender all? To our Heavenly Father as our Lord and Savior Jesus did? Are we going to make that choice to lay our will down, even knowing that we are free moral agents? And God blessed us with that. So it's a choice that we have to make. Are we willing to surrender? Are we willing to follow the example that Jesus set for us? And notice, Jesus tells us here, he makes the choice. He lays his life down. Amen. What's the result? So that he could take it up again. 
Let's not lose that point tonight. You and I surrender our will. We surrender. We make that choice. We lay our lives down. Mm -hmm. And we're told in different places in the Bible, you, lay, you lose your life to gain it. We lay this life Amen. down. Right. We surrender mm -hmm. our free will so that we can gain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, following right. his example, laying it down so that we can take it up again for all eternity, mm -hmm. for all eternity. Uh, so we see Jesus setting that example of choosing. Mm -hmm. Uh, still under that same idea, that same thought, I want us to turn over to Philippians 2 and look again where we see, and this is Paul writing, but we see him writing about the choice, the choice that Jesus made, again, choosing, choosing to come to this earth, suffer and die, live as a human, live as a man, know the temptations, the pains that Amen. we have the sufferings that we have. He understands all of it because he lived it. He lived it. He came to this earth and he suffered as you and I do. And he suffered even great, more greatly than you and I do when he took that cross and suffered that horrible, Amen. inhumane death for you and I. So he certainly understands our pains. He understands our strifes, our trials, our tribulations. He's walked this earth as you and I do. Philippians 2 at verse 5 is where we're going to start. It says, let this mind be in you. So Paul starts out by saying, let this be who you are, believer. Let this be how you think. Let this be what you carry in your heart. Let this mind be in you. And he goes on to explain what, what mindset he's talking about. What mindset is Paul talking about? He says, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let your mind be like Christ Jesus' mind was. And he goes on to explain some of what he means by that explaining Christ Jesus, he says, who, being in the form of God, though it thought it not robbery to be equal with God, Jesus, equal with God. That's right. In heaven and glory with God the Father. Amen. Asked to come to this earth, suffer and die for you and I, did just that. Amen. And thought it not robbery. We fail there a lot, I'm afraid. We find ourselves maybe when we're faced with this choice, of surrendering when we're faced with this choice of laying down our will and seeking out the Father's will. Often, I do anyway. Let me, let me say it that way. I, I find myself sometimes being a little resentful sometimes. Maybe uh, this ain't fair sometimes. Amen. You're asking me to, to live a life that doesn't seem fair always. You know, you're right. asking me to, to walk away from some things that, that I feel are important to me. You're asking me right. to, Amen. to live a life that it looks a little different, and sometimes that's uncomfortable and that's difficult. Sometimes we feel like we're being robbed when we surrender all, or we're being asked to surrender all. You know, surrendering your mind, surrendering how you think, working on and practicing thinking godly things, mm -hmm. thinking in a godly way. And to do that, you know, it's about putting God first. To do that, you got to stop thinking about all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where we feel like we're getting cheated sometimes, but we're not being cheated, friend. We are not being cheated. Amen. We have to surrender all. We've talked about it this week. It can't be a partial surrender. It can't be a halfway thing. We've got to get it right, and getting it right means giving it all to God, focusing on Him, putting Him first in all things. So surrendering our mind to Him, surrendering our mindset, how we think, Amen. what we think about. Now spend a little less time thinking about the ball game, or a little less time thinking about supper plans, or a little less time thinking about anything that we Amen. spend our time thinking about, Amen. and focus on God. Think about God and, and godly things. Surrendering our bodies unto Him. You know, when, when, I, when I think about that, I think about surrendering our bodies, one, and how we use them, what we do with them, mm -hmm. what we allow ourselves to do with our bodies. We have to be careful with that. We have Amen. to surrender that to God. We have to seek after His ways and follow His ways. Uh, again, a thought of surrendering our body, where we place our efforts. Sure. We use this physical body to do things here on this earth. Right. What are we doing with ourselves? Right. How are we using our bodies? Are we serving God with them? Are we out doing his work? Or are we out doing some other work? Amen. Uh, we need to surrender all to him. But we see Jesus here as the example. Equal with God. That's hard maybe for us to really fully contemplate and Amen. take in and wrap our minds around to really even fully understand it. Maybe we can't while we're here on this earth. Uh, one of these days we'll be uh, given that perfect knowledge 
But right now, uh, to think about that he was equal with God, but being asked of God to come to this earth and surrender himself, he did just that. Think about, you know, when we feel like we're being cheated, think about Jesus and what he had to surrender. Amen. He surrendered being equal oh, with God amen. to come to this earth and be like you and me. Amen. Walk around every day and get hungry. Amen. Walk around and have his back ache like Brother L.C. was talking right. about earlier. You know, walk around and have the pains of this old mortal body that we have. Right. Jesus suffered those things. He knows what that's Amen. like. Amen. He didn't have to. He chose to. Right. He was obedient unto the Father to do that. But made himself of no reputation. But not only did he come down from heaven to earth, he came down in a comely way. He came down in a, in a meager way, in a humble way. Amen. No reputation. It took upon him the form of a servant. The form of a servant, Amen. the lowly among us, the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, unto death, even the death of the cross. That's right. And that's added there for uh, emphasis. Again, a lot of that description is there for emphasis. He came down as a servant. He came down humbly. He came down to die. He Amen. came down to die on a cross. Amen. And the way it was understood, you know, that's that's that was a cursed thing. That wasn't mm -hmm. a good thing to die on a tree, to be hung on a tree. It was Amen. seen as a as a as a terrible thing. And it was a terrible thing. Amen. If we spend a little time thinking about it, it was a gruesome thing. Uh, he suffered greatly. He suffered greatly as a man for you and I. Amen. He came to this earth in the flesh, yes, he taking did. it on. And he suffered greatly for you and I tonight. Each and every one of us, so that we could so that we could have a hope, so that we could be reconciled with the Father, so that we could have the, the chance, the option of choosing to surrender all Amen. to our Heavenly Father Amen. and being obedient unto Him. You know, I was thinking about my struggles with this surrender all mm -hmm. idea and trying to follow the example that Jesus has set. And again, I say, and maybe you don't struggle with this as much as I, but... Sometimes I do. Sometimes uh, I want to say it's not fair. I want to feel like uh, I'm being cheated a little bit or asked to do too much or right. whatever. But Amen. when we find ourselves in that spot, I, I think what we got to do is we got to remember. Look back to Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Right. We just read here. Amen. Look back and see Jesus' example. Remind ourselves of what he did for us. Remind ourselves of the choice he made for us and surrendering himself, yes, surrendering himself equal to God, coming to this earth, suffering and dying the way that he did. Amen. And hopefully we can do that. And when we do that, we can be reminded that we have no complaint. We have nothing to complain about. We are blessed beyond we deserve. We have That's our right. Heavenly Father who cares for us and provides for us so much Amen. that he asked his son to be obedient unto death. Amen. So much that his son was just that, obedient unto death for you and I both. Amen. So when we find ourselves with that woe is me, maybe attitude, in our weakness, in our flesh, let's be reminded of Philippians 2. Go Amen. back and look at it. Carry the scripture with us. Carry it on our hearts, hopefully, right. so that we can combat those weaknesses. We can combat those moments of where we, we fail and come short and start feeling a little sorry for ourselves. Right. Go back and remember Jesus mm -hmm. and the example he right. set for us. So choice, you know, surrender, it's a choice. That's right. Jesus set the example, made the choice. We have the choice to make, each and every one of us. Right. We have the choice to make. God doesn't force himself on us, but he reaches out to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. He gives us the opportunity to make what I'll tell you tonight is the correct choice. He gives us the opportunity to make the right choice and be responsive unto him when he draws nigh unto us. And draws us nigh unto him. He gives us those opportunities. We just have to be uh, obedient and responsive to it. Uh, and I want us to think about uh, the, what I've labeled maybe as the most important choice. The most important choice uh, that, that sort of starts this journey for each and every one of us. And that choice is the choice of accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Choosing him. That first choice we've got to make to get on this journey toward Amen. heaven, to get on this journey of living into our salvation, choosing Jesus, our Lord and Savior, choosing him. So if you're watching tonight and you don't know him, 
you're watching tonight and you haven't made that first choice, what I'll call that first choice, that most important choice, uh, I want us to turn over to Romans 10. And good Lord willing, we're going to be over in the book of Romans, I guess, the rest of this message. But we're going to start over in Romans 10 uh, on this. Choosing Jesus, the most important choice. Sure. Romans 10 at verse 8 is where we're going to look. And this is some familiar scripture probably to both of these uh, preacher brethren here with me tonight. And maybe a lot of you out there too. But for any out there that don't know him, any out there that don't know, listen to these scriptures and know that uh, Jesus is your hope, your only hope. Amen. Uh, but through him, you shall be saved if you'll be accepted unto him. At verse 8 it says, But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which Amen. we preach. We preach to you here tonight, just like Paul was preaching here when, when he wrote this letter to the Romans, the word of faith, faith in Jesus Christ. He goes on here at verse 9 to say that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Confessing the Lord Jesus with your mouth, confessing that he is, sure enough, the Son of God. He is the Son of God that was sent to this earth to suffer and die for each and every one of us. And believe in your heart that he's been raised from the dead. God Amen. raised him up. He's a risen Savior. Amen. He's alive and well. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. It tells you right there, thou shalt be saved. It doesn't say you might be saved. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say maybe you'll be saved. It says thou shalt be Amen. saved. Amen. Put your trust in Jesus and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And you invite him into your heart, tell the world about it. For the script, whosoever believes in them shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. It's open to each and every one of us. Everybody on this earth has an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. It's a choice that you have to make. It's that Amen. ultimate choice, that most important choice. When God's knocking at your heart's door, drawing you unto his Son, be responsive. Be responsive and know that he died for you just like he died or anybody that's born of Jewish heritage, Amen. or anybody else. He Amen. came so that we all could be born again, so that we all could not perish, so that we all could miss the devil's hell, so that we all could be reunited with him in glory. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him, for whosoever, whosoever. I love that word, whosoever, again. It's, Amen. it's for all. No respecter of person. Everybody. Everybody. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And again, I like it. It's, it's reiterated there. It's hammered home one more time. It's not a maybe. It's not an if. It's not a possible possibility. It's a shall. Amen. Shall be saved. If you trust in Jesus, if you call on him, you shall be saved. So again, that's that most important choice. That most important choice that we all have to make have to make that choice to get on this road that we're talking about of surrendering all. That's the first step in surrendering all, mm -hmm. is laying ourselves down to Jesus, Amen. calling out on him, asking that he forgive us, cover us in his blood, come to him with a repentant heart, broken heart, contrite spirit, humbly seeking him as our Lord and Savior. That's that first and most important choice. But now to move on to the practice, what I've called the practice of surrender. And thinking on this, uh, we're going to, again, like I said, we're going to be in the book of Romans for the rest of the message unless the Lord changes it up. But living a surrendered life. And then thinking about that even more, i got to think, maybe uh, say the scripture we're going to go through might be uh, called or phrased what it looks like. When I, when I talk about a practice, that's what I mean is what it, what it actually looks like, the practical aspect of it, when you're living a life that is surrendered, when you're living a surrendered life to God. Amen. Here are some of the characteristics that uh, we should see. If I'm living a surrendered life to God, these are some characteristics you should see in me. When you see me out practicing my life, when you see me out living my life, you should see me living it in this way. A surrendered life, I believe, is supposed to look like what we're going to see here in Romans 12. And verse 1 is where we're going to start. We'll skip around a little bit. But, uh, 
We see here at Romans 12 at verse 1, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, beseech, I beg, I beg you therefore, brethren, Amen. by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I believe that, in, that, in, that it entails actually, again, surrendering our bodies, what we actually do with ourselves, how we use our bodies, things that we don't need to do with our bodies, things that we need to be doing with our bodies. Uh, but I think it also probably entails or encompasses even more, and that's just this overall practice of living a surrendered life, the overall practice of living a surrendered life. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Paul hits them both there, body and mind. Body and mind, we've got to renew our mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what's its purpose? What's the purpose of living a surrendered life? Is it important that we live a surrendered life? Yes, amen. It's required, isn't it? It's, amen. A, it's a required thing because our surrendered life proves out the will of God. Another way maybe of saying that is that we won't be found in the will of God without living a surrendered life. Amen. If we Amen. haven't surrendered our life unto Him, we won't find ourselves in His perfect will. That's right. uh, you know, and we're all still here on this earth in our flesh, so we miss the mark sometimes. But when we do miss the mark, we need to be aware enough of our situation and who we are. That's right. To come to Him and repent. Amen. Come to Him and ask for His forgiveness. To come to Him and seek His strength and His courage and His wisdom so that we can not make the same mistake again. Seek out His help in dealing with our imperfections, dealing with our weaknesses. Uh, this be not conformed to this world. You know, that's that's uh, a warning that we're given or some direction that we're given. We can't be doing both. Amen. We can't conform to this world and also live a surrendered life. Amen. It does not work that way. And we right. preached on that maybe every night this week. I don't know. That maybe has come up every night this week. You can't be one leg in the world and one leg in uh, serving God. Amen. It just does not work that way. And God's made that plain. He's made that clear throughout the Scripture that He expects us to give Him our all, surrendering all to Him, living that surrendered life unto Him. I want us to turn over to... Uh, uh, Verse 9, you're still staying in chapter 12 of Romans. Over in verse 9, we see, uh, again, what I kind of thought of as some of the characteristics, what it actually looks like. Because oftentimes, you know, I think we preach and we, we talk about some of, these, uh, some of these ideas and things, and maybe sometimes we don't uh, get to the actual practical aspect of it. Give the people, give myself, God's given it to us already, what it actually is what it is that we need to be doing, what a surrendered life looks like. It says, let love be without dissimulation. Dissimulation, according to my concordance, means hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Let love be without hypocrisy. Let it be real. That's right, let it be real. Amen. Let it be genuine. Let it be sincere. Don't Amen. let it be something that we do because we know we're told that we're supposed to love. Amen. If it's not real love, it's no good. That's right. Abhor that which is evil. We've got to take a stand. We got into that last night a little bit. We've got to take a stand against that which is evil. We can't just ignore it. That's not taking a stand. That's not abhorring it. We've got to stand up against that, is, that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Amen. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Now, I'm sort of rushing through these some a little bit maybe, but let, let's, maybe we ought to slow down and talk about some of these. Not slothful in business. That's part of a surrendered life. We're given that right here in the Scripture. There's a way that we're supposed to conduct ourselves. We're not supposed to be slothful which I think of as being uh, lazy, Amen. not being lazy in business, Amen. fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, that one, so timely, isn't it? We find ourselves in a, maybe what we 
with the phrase a worldwide tribulation right now. Uh, uh, definitely in a, you know, in these United States, it's it's been treated as a tribulation, right. uh, and locally, it is a tribulation uh, because we're all being affected by it. We're here tonight, three men here in this church building right. that could hold probably a hundred. Uh, but we got an audience on Facebook, and we thank the Lord for that. But we are in that tribulation. There's, this is a, tr a trouble. This is a trial. This is a difficulty. We're told to be patient in it. Be patient in it. Continuing instant in prayer. That's how we should respond, right? Amen. Instead of getting all worked up and getting Amen. in a frenzy about it, we should hit our knees about it. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to, the, given to hospitality. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Taking care of each other, right? Right. Providing Amen. for those who are in need. Given to hospitality. Taking care of each other. Amen. Amen. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Sometimes we may struggle with that one. Amen. But we're told, we're directed. That's what a surrendered life looks like. A surrendered life will find us blessing those who persecute us. Yes, amen. And cursing them not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, which my concordian says that means do not be proud. Amen. It's another one that we struggle with. A lot of Amen. these things that uh, we see on this list of what I've sort of phrased as characteristics of a surrendered life or what it looks like to, to be living surrendered uh, are things that are difficult for us in the flesh. They're difficult things for for us in the flesh. And that's maybe why they're listed out here. Because we need to be made aware of that. Right. Reminded of that. Amen. And reminded of who our source is of strength. Who it is through which we can uh, overcome our flesh. How it is that we overcome our flesh. With the Holy Spirit is help. The blood of Jesus. That's our only chance. Our only hope. Mind not high things. That be not proud. But condescend to men of low estate. Said, and that, my concordia says, associate with, but associate with men of low estate, meaning position. So don't don't forsake those that are lower than you. Right. Don't feel like you're better than everybody right. because you've got a higher position. You've Amen. got a bigger estate, maybe, or anything of that nature. That's not a surrendered life. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise conceits, they're meaning estimation. Be not wise in your own estimation. Don't think of yourself as being all high and mighty. You know, Amen. Be humble. Amen. We know we got to be humble. And that that is saying be humble in a different way, basically. Don't be high and mighty. Don't be haughty. Recompense to no man evil for evil. We can't be going about vengeance. We can't That's be going right. about repaying somebody. Amen. You know, and that's difficult for us. Amen. The flesh wants to strike back. That's right. The flesh wants to respond. The flesh wants to give my side of the argument. And that's the thing we struggle, we deal that's with right. a lot Amen. in this day and age. With Facebook, Amen. this very thing that allows us to come to you tonight, it does a lot of good, but it also contains maybe some bad things, and we got to right. be careful. Amen. We got to be careful about getting on there and arguing with people. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. We got to be careful about re recompense to no man evil for evil. We got to. Bite our tongue. Like, you know, we're told the dangers of the tongue in the scripture. We've mm -hmm. got to be careful. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Like Concordius there says, do what is right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I like that. Amen. I like that simplification there. Do what is right. You know, and we all know in our heart of hearts, and especially we're talking about the believer here. We've been bought with a price. Amen. We're living this surrendered life. We're yes, trying amen. to. We're supposed to be. So certainly, we know in our hearts what is right. And we know when we do wrong. And again, when we do that, because ultimately we do, we fail, we come short. We're in the flesh still. When we do, we need to hit our knees. We need to humble ourselves enough to be aware of our wrongdoing, to be aware of our weaknesses, and admit those things, and come to God and seek forgiveness through Jesus Amen. Christ for those things. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men, if it be possible. I, I think of that as much as you've got in you, it says, as much as life in you. So give it your all. That's right. Amen. Give it your all. Amen. To live peaceably with all men. That's right. All men. 
Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. He gets to this point again about not seeking vengeance. But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. It's no place for us. That's right. We don't have a right to seek vengeance. Amen. We're, we're, we're shown that here in the scripture. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Vengeance is mine, I will, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Mm -hmm. That's right. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. Amen. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. It's powerful. When, when, I, when I hear, when I read that last bit about heaping coals of fire on his head, I think, you know, that's kind of almost a contradiction, it seems. But then I think about it a little further, and I think, now that indicates how powerful it is. It's powerful when we, the people of God, act like the people of God. Amen. It's powerful when we, the people, live a surrendered life. It's powerful to this world out here. When they see us getting these characteristics right, it's powerful. But also understand the converse of that, the opposite of it. It hurts us. That's right. It hurts us terribly when we don't live this surrendered life. That's right. Amen. The whole church, the whole body is hurt Amen. terribly when we do not live this surrendered life. Amen. So we got to be careful. We got to be serious about this. We got to be sincere in our efforts. It can't just be something that we talk about. It can't just be something that we come to church and hear about on Sunday and Wednesday night. It's got to be a commitment. It's got to be a practice. Use that term practice. It's like a doctor practices or a lawyer practices or Amen. a nurse practices. Anybody that does anything routinely, that's a practice. That's right. It's something that you do day in and day out. Something that you practice. You put it into doing. It takes action. Amen. It takes more than just talking about it. It takes more than just reading about it. We've got to take action. And one of the most important actions is getting on our knees. Get on our knees and praying that we can be strengthened to right. live a surrendered Amen. life. Amen. Because we cannot do it on our own. We fail at this terribly when we try to do it on our own. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, there's so much power in that. So much power in that when we look to use good in response, really to all things. Using good in response to all circumstances, all situations. Carrying that joy that we have within us outwardly so that everybody sees that joy that the Lord has put in us. The joy that we have in our hearts because He dwells within us. Using that in response to all things, whatever our circumstances are, Amen. whatever the situation is, be it that someone has said something ugly to us on Facebook or out here in the street or wherever it right. is. Amen. You know, the, the, the phrase, kill them with kindness, comes to mind. Amen. Uh, and that's that's not scripture, but that's, uh, I think, akin to what we're talking about here. Right. Is Amen. Using the love that God has put in our hearts to deal with all people. In all situations. Amen. Whatever's going on. Be they someone we consider an enemy. Amen. Or be they someone we consider a brother or a sister in Christ. Be they family, friend, stranger. Whatever the circumstance may be. Share the love of God with them. Show them what the Lord has given you. That's a witness. That's a testimony. That's a practice. That's a surrendered life that is a testimony of what Jesus gives. What Jesus brings to one's heart and soul. You can do things that the world can't understand. You can respond with a smile in a situation that the world might respond with a fist. You can do that with the help of the Jesus, with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of being prayed up, with the help of practicing this surrendered life, living it, not just talking about it, not just reading about it, but living it. Again, like we said about Philippians 2, 5 through 8, I hope you can take this scripture and let it be burned on your heart. Let it be etched in there such that you remember it. That after we finish with this message tonight, you don't just completely forget about what's there in Romans 12. This Romans 12 
uh, is one of my favorite chapters, I guess, in the whole uh, uh, Bible uh, for what it provides for us, what it gives us. It, it helps us, sometimes I say, you know, live in that Romans 12 life. That's another way that I might would say living a surrendered life, living that Romans 12 life, a life that only a believer can live. Mm -hmm. The world can't right. live this life, and we can't live it on our own. We make that first ultimate choice of following Jesus, and he talked about taking up your cross and following after <clears> him. <throat> part of that cross is living a surrendered life. That's part of that cross that we're asked to carry, is to live this <coughs> way. Live this way that confounds the world. Live this way that the world cannot <coughs> copy, cannot imitate, and cannot carry off. Live a way that shows the world that we are a separate and different people. We are set apart in the world, but not of the world. We're going to turn over to Romans uh, 13 now. And we're soon to close. Uh, I never can tell how long I've been up here. I'll be honest, I get up here and it seems like I just started, you know, five minutes ago and I've probably been up here an hour, I don't know. Uh, but we're soon to close here. We just got a few uh, more scriptures to live, I mean, to, to read. Um, and so, but still focused on the practice of living that surrendered life and what that looks like. And, and I offer to you, there's more. You know, Romans 12 provides a lot of information. This little bit we're going to read right here, Romans 13, provides a lot of information, I believe, and I submit to you that it does uh, about living a surrendered life and what that is and what the characteristics are. But there's so much more in the Bible overall uh, to look to and to see and to dig for yourself uh, what those characteristics are and what it means for you, what a surrendered life means for you. There's going to be probably some differences between my surrendered life and your surrendered life. And you got to get in the Word and dig that out for yourself if there's things uh, that are different for you than for me. And I certainly hope you'll spend some time doing that. Uh, and I did want to mention that this isn't all that's there. There's so much more to get in there and find. Uh, and I believe the whole book of Romans, actually, if you'll spend some time in it, uh, Paul spent a lot of time in the book of Romans sort of setting this stuff out for the believer, for you and me, so that we can know right. what we're supposed to be, so that we can know how we're supposed to live so that we could be exactly what we claim to be, that we could be a surrendered life, <laughs> that we would have truly laid ourselves down, sacrificed ourselves, That's right. and picked up our cross and follow after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here at verse 8 it says, O no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Another way maybe of phrasing that would be saying, you paid your debt to everybody if you love them. You paid your debt to your fellow man if you love him. And we know, you know, and I think it gets, and maybe even comes out in this scripture here, uh, that we're told that we're supposed to love our fellow man. That's right. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. And then Paul goes into, here's what that looks like. Here's what I mean by loving your brother. Here's what loving your brother looks like. Amen. And you can say the opposite of that is if you do these things that I say not to do, well, that's the opposite of loving your brother. That's not loving your brother. Amen. But thou shalt not commit adultery. Not committing adultery is loving your brother. That's right. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We see Paul here referencing what Jesus taught. That's right. Amen. What Jesus taught. You can hang them all on putting God first and then loving your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Paul lists out a lot of the commandments there. He didn't list them all, but he sort Amen. of sums it out. He sums it up there at the end. says, all the, if there's any more, knowing that there is, he says, briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love fulfills the law. That's right. All those things that are listed in the law, um, if you're doing them, you are loving your neighbor. And when you breach that law, you're not loving your neighbor. Amen. And if you're not loving your neighbor, you're not loving God. Amen. 
You're not loving God. So we've got to be careful about these things. This stuff is serious. Again, it's not just something we talk about. It can't be something we just talk about. Mm -hmm. And maybe I've, you know, I've said these messages, God sends me, uh, he seems to be you know, talking right at me because I know what it's like to just talk about it. Again, not to boast, it's shame. It's shameful. I know what it's like to just talk about it. I know what it's like to just read through it. That's not living mm -hmm. a surrendered life. Amen. That's a falsehood is what it is mm -hmm. when it yes, comes down amen. to it. That's, that's a misleading lie. So we got to be careful. we got to be more about it than just giving it lip service or letting it be religion. You know, it can't just be something that we, or a ritual, it can't just be something we do because that's what we feel like we're supposed to show up and do. Mm -hmm. It's got to be of the heart. Amen. Where God truly looks. God doesn't look at me as some white male who lives in Benton County. He looks into my heart and he that's sees right. whether I'm of him or I'm of the devil. That's right. That's it. That's the two. That's what he looks You're either with him or you're without him. And that's what he sees when he looks at us in our heart, I believe. At verse 11, it says, And that, knowing the time, Paul gets into uh, some of the reasons maybe here at the end as to why it's important. It's important that's that right. we live this surrendered life. He says, And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. And he's writing to the Roman church here. Right. So, you know, he had an audience that he was addressing with this. Well, mm -hmm. We've got an audience tonight, and we've got a world tonight. We've got an America tonight that needs to... Right. We need to wake up out of our sleep, Amen. including myself. We need to wake up, awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Amen. It's closer, moment by moment. Jesus is coming back. It's closer, moment by moment. You don't get back that moment that just passed. That's right. All the time you have is right now. Mm -hmm. Like Brother Justin said, now time. Now time is the time to be responsive. Now time is the time to be active. Now time is the time to be practicing a surrendered life. Right. You can't get back. I can't get back those years. And it was years of just giving it lip service. Right. Years of just reading through. I can't get that back. But I can sure focus on now time. I can sure hit my knees and pray to my Heavenly Father that I be strengthened to be really about it. I can be strengthened to really live it and not just give it lip service. And you can too tonight. And I hope you have that desire in your heart tonight to live it and not just give it lip service. To actually make it your practice, a surrendered life. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us, let us be doing what our Father has directed us to do. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness. Chambering there meaning sexual immorality. Wantonness meaning debauchery. That's right. We got to live the life we're called to live. We can't be the light that we're called to be if we're living like the darkness. Amen. We can't be the light if we're doing the things of darkness. Not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. I like the way it ends here. It Amen. ends with letting us know the only way. The only way that we can carry this off, the only way that it works, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope he's covering you tonight. And I pray that he covers me. Moment by moment, I need him covering me. Moment by moment, I need him covering me. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now that fleshly desire, it's in us while we're here on this earth. And we've got to fight against that. And he tells us here, make not provision. Don't give it a chance. Don't make an allowance for it. Don't give it room to wiggle its way into your surrendered life. Because when you do, you'll find yourself allowing the lust thereof to be fulfilled. We have to be careful. We've got to cover ourselves. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Cover yourself up with him from head to toe. Call on him in all circumstances and situations. 
knowing that he's the only way that we can be Amen. living this surrendered life. The only way that it can be a practice. The only way it can be real for us That's right. is to give it over to him and stay covered in the Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, as we get a song, I, I just want to go back again and mention that most important choice. That most important choice that we all have an opportunity to make, and we do make. You either choose to follow Jesus, you choose to take him as your Lord and Savior, or you reject him. And you may think, and you may, you, you know, your experience may have been, well, I haven't really made any kind of choice. Well, not choosing is a choice. Not choosing is your choice. If you've made, if you've done that, if you've ignored him, you know, if you haven't just openly and blatantly said, I reject you, you may feel like I haven't really made a choice, but you have by not accepting him. So I pray tonight that if you're feeling the drawing power of the Holy Spirit, if God's knocking on your heart and bidding you to move, bidding you to come to him, I pray that you'll do just that. Make yourself an altar wherever you're at. Again, we've said earlier in the week, that's not important. God's looking in your heart. God knows your heart. He's not concerned if you're bent down at a bench, if you're bent down at this altar here in this building, or if you're standing up in a corner in your house. He's not concerned about those things. Those are things that we, the flesh, sometimes we get ourselves concerned about. But God, he's no longer concerned about those things. Under the old law, maybe there was concern about what altar you used. But he sent his son, and his, his son fulfilled that law. All you have to do is be responsive. Cry out to Jesus. Amen. That scripture we read, proclaim the Lord. Amen. Proclaim him as your Savior. Accept him into your heart. We pray tonight that that would be just what you do if you feel him. It does require the drawing power of God, though. I don't want to mislead anybody or right. confuse about Amen. anybody in that regard. Uh, it takes the drawing power of God. Uh, if he, is, if he is drawing you, I pray that you would be responsive and that you would accept his son as your Lord and Savior Jesus yes, tonight amen. and that you would get things ready. You'd get that ticket, that ticket we talked about, purchased, ready to go to glory. Amen. Like that. That's our prayer for you. The believer that's out there, we just pray that you'll take this message tonight and that you'll carry it with you and that you'll remind yourself of it from time to time when you find yourself struggling maybe yes. on the face of this earth to live to live this surrendered <clears throat> life we're called to live. We just pray that you'll remember some of these scriptures and that you'll get in here with those and add more to, that you'll dig around and yes. find what it is that you stand in need of in God's word to help you on your journey each yes. and every day, Amen. moment by moment. God bless you is our prayer. 111 near the cross. Jesus. say I, I I look at that surrendered life and uh what does it remind me and that, that is some good scripture out of the twelfth chapter of the book yes, of Romans. And, uh, you know what I, I like that too living the Roman twelve life. I, you know we all gotta do that. It, it's not a choice when it comes to that. When you're a born again child of God you ought to live that way. Right. And, uh, if you're saved you gotta live like you saved. So I appreciate that tonight and I pray that we've taken something out of this revival. Each and every one of us everybody can yes. represent it on here and uh, uh you know what I think that's what it's about is what was uh, come to be after the revival's over with. That's how you know the fruits of the revival. And I believe that when God comes by, He doesn't He doesn't uh, leave anything undone. Uh, right. So you know what? Well, when He comes by to do something, uh, you know He intends on to be done. But it's what we take with it, 
and use it for uh, for the upbuilding of the kingdom is what it's supposed to be for. So right. let's be found doing that this week. And uh, uh, for Faith General Baptist Church, we thank each and every one of you for being here. I know our members have been on there every night, and we thank everybody for, for showing up on there and uh, beginning to listen to it. Uh, you know what? It has been different. Uh, uh, bigger in an empty church, and uh, yes. but you know what? The spirit of God wasn't any different. Uh, right. You know That's what? Right. It was exactly the same. Yeah, and, uh, you know what? I'm I'm glad he's the same God because uh, uh, it don't matter where, what changes around us. Uh, he's still constant in our life, and uh, yes. we'll allow him to work. Uh, he'll do his mighty work in an awesome way that we just stand and we we stand there and awe and look at it. Uh, right. So you know what? I'm thankful for that tonight. So we thank you uh, for being with us tonight, and uh, we've appreciated. Uh, uh, Brother Daniel for making a stand this week. Yes, Brother LC yes. for helping us uh, uh, with the songs and stuff. And uh, you know what? Uh, the Lord, I'm, I'm glad He blessed us with, with, with men that could be able to stand and, and help and uh, you know and do those things. So uh, yes. uh, you know what? We don't want to take that for granted tonight. So we're going to end out with prayer uh, to close the revival. But once again, uh, I pray the Lord bless you in all the ways that you go. I know that we got our own separate lives to live and things like that, but we can remember each other. Uh, all the churches are represented here. On Facebook and uh, out through the land where it's going out. Uh, uh, so you know what? We need to pray for the church, not just Faith General Baptist. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we just all need to come together and begin to pray for our leadership in the country and our churches and everything else. So uh, we're going to close out prayer tonight. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've done for us, dear Lord. And we thank you for another opportunity uh, to gather in your name tonight, dear Lord. And we pray, dear Lord, that uh, uh, this revival, uh, that it, as it goes out, it, it'll enter into each and every one of us, dear Lord. And uh, uh, as we go throughout our weeks of our lives that are light ahead, and uh, uh, if it be your will, dear Lord, uh, I would pray that we be found being a shining light unto the world, dear Lord, and that they may see you through us, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. And uh, uh, I pray tonight, dear Lord, that as the scripture goes out, uh, uh, we, we know what kind of power it has to it and what it can do. Uh, uh, we just allow, allow our hearts and our minds to be open unto it, dear Lord, and uh, uh, be willing and obedient, dear Lord, to go out there and do the things that you'd have us do, dear Lord. And uh, uh, most of all, tonight, we pray for opportunity, dear Lord, that you'd uh, uh, place it in our life, uh, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, I, I know that you have done a work in me uh, uh, that, was, that was not possible by worldly standards. Uh, uh, you came and you saved my soul, dear Lord, and uh, uh, you put my feet on a solid rock, dear Lord. And today, uh, that rock that I stand on, dear Lord, just to give me the strength to go out in the world. And, uh, and each and every one that's represented here, uh, as we bring forth the truth, we ask for the strength uh, uh, to be able to stand, dear Lord. And uh, yes. uh, we thank you for Brother Daniel, uh, uh, Brother LC, uh, all those that have participated, dear Lord. Uh, we thank you for everyone that's been on these uh, uh, these Facebook Live videos, dear Lord, that yes. uh, uh, began to come by and look. And uh, uh, we thank you for every little uh, uh, rose in life that we've been uh, uh, bestowed upon us, dear Lord, and uh, uh, that we not take it for granted. Uh, uh, we thank you for those out there in the world that, uh, uh, that, are, that are on the front lines, dear Lord, battling, it, battling this virus, dear Lord. Uh, uh, protect them, guide them, and direct them, dear Lord, in the way that you have them be. Uh, uh, tonight, we just pray for those that are maybe sick and afflicted. Uh, uh, you just uplift them, dear Lord, and give them what they stand in need of, dear Lord. Uh, a little bit of peace and comfort, if it will. Uh, uh, but tonight, most of all, we pray for those that are lost and undone out in the world, don't know you, the free pardon and forgiveness of sin. We pray that tonight through the night they accept the scripture for what it is. Uh, accept your son, Jesus Christ, for it's everlastingly too late. And uh, uh, we thank you for everything you've done for us, and we ask that you forgive us. We fail to come short. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We got, we, God bless you and we love you.